Welcome back all, this is Daz from Model Road Techniques. So up this week, I'm gonna make, walk you through how to make this little guy, which is a loco net hub or splitter for a want of a better phrase. I'll walk you through how to order online the printed circuit board and what components we're gonna use. I won't bore you with the soldering side of things because there's not a lot of soldering to this little guy. Um, and also there's plenty of videos out there on how to solder correctly. So enough of the waffle, let's get started. What is Loconet? So first of all, Loconet was designed by Digitrax back in the day, and it's a, a communication protocol between your DCC command station, which is Loconet enabled, to other DCC, or sorry, other Loconet devices, such as throttles, occupancy detection, reverse loop modules, and the, the list could go on and on. Also, Loconet allows you to interface with PC computer programs like JMRI, train controller, iTrain, rock rail, and various control programs like that. Being that we have awesome modeling standards through the NMRA, um, through DCC, and also LocoNet, other companies are now coming on board with LocoNet of probably recent decade or so, such as I can think of Roco and NCE and various other companies out there. So you may be asking why would you want to build or why would you need one of these LocoNet splitters or hubs? The beauty of the LocoNet communication bus, there is many configurations you can use. The only limitation to the LocoNet bus is as long as it's not linked back to itself, which obviously creates some issues. So from DCC Wiki, there's obviously a few examples here. So the daisy chain, as we're explaining here, also there's a star shape and also what they're going to call the bus. So the LocoNet um, topology, they're saying a maximum of 600 metres and a maximum distance between items is 180 metres. So if you've got a layout that's more hundred maximum length of 600 metres long, it's a rather large enterprise. So what are we making? So the LocoNet splitter is a junction box or a hub, want a bit, for want of a better phrase, for the LocoNet communications bus. You use it, add branches to your LocoNet bus so you can connect several modules at once or add a connection for a throttle, etc. All you need to do is collect one of the outputs to the central DCC command unit or whatever your LocoNet is coming from and use the other four connections to other LocoNet devices. The LocoNet, the LocoNet splitter helps you create a central LocoNet cable under your layout with branches to modules rather than looping one LocoNet cable through everything uh, through all the other modules. This, this increases the reliability of your LocoNet and makes problem solving a lot easier to spot. And doing it this way, there's also extra LocoNet connections to add extra modules whenever you need them. So what electrical components do you need? So first of all, we use the two pole screw connectors. We use the, the 1N4001 diode. We've also got the 2200 microfarad at 25 volts capacitor. We've also got a 100 picofarad capacitor and also the RJ12 connectors. All right, so quickly what we're gonna do, we're going to go into my sponsor's website, pcbway.com. And I'm just gonna show you how easy it is to upload the Gerber file here and order some really good looking PCB. So this is the, the schematic, well not the schematic, but the, the drawing what the PCB is gonna look like. So let's go into the website proper and we'll go through what we need to do. We'll go into pcbway.com and you can see up the top here, instant quote. So we'll go for quote now. So there's a few different ways you can do this, board type, I'm not gonna worry about that. That's obviously if you wanna have a, 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 um, a breakaway board where I always go single piece and the different design in panels is to do with what we have above. So what we need to look at doing is the size of this is gonna be 60 millimeters by 40 millimeters. And that's obviously in the metric world. So we'll go, we'll go this one requires two layers. We're not gonna go anything special. So just the FR4, the base material, I'm just gonna leave the same. The thickness is gonna be 1.6 millimeters, is about standard, six mil, 
spacings between the tracks is about right uh, three mil hole size or you can obviously drill it yourself if that's what you want to do the solder masks so the solder mask refers to the color of the board so i'm going to do something a bit differently i've done green ones before i want to do blue ones this time the silt screen is obviously the color of the writing so the white on blue is going to look very very schmick uh, no uv printing is required no edge connector no i'm just going to go the, the basic h a s l finish and I'm just going to leave it at this tenting. So basically what that is, that's going to do, the Gerber file is going to do everything that you need to do that. And obviously the copper finish is the one ounce copper. Because I'm going to be soldering these all myself. Now from that we go, we go to calculate. I'm going to go for five of them. Five quantity. Alright, so we're going to look at, that's five US dollars. And the shipping is, it is what it is. But you can obviously, as you add more stuff to this, the shipping does not go up it go, does not go exponentially so there's obviously different shipping options you can do i probably wouldn't go away anything that's dhl or fedex to be quite honest with you i've done dhl before and that's more than fine for what i need to do and we can also go uh, assembly service as well i'm not going to go the assembly service because i'm going to put them in together in this video now the next thing i want to do um, is add the gerber file so i've got that here it's just a matter of pulling the file into it now there's plenty of videos on the gerbers and the like i'm not going to go into that that's not something that i'm really all that au fait with if you want to make your own schematic or your own pcb boards up um, that's what you can do but um, this is beyond the scope of what this this video is going to be about this is just about how going in a PCB way and ordering and how easy it can be so it's now sitting in there for what it what it needs to do so as you can see just here it's subject to audit so what happens it goes away to um, their technicians at PCB way and they they will get back to you doesn't normally take all that long and then you're good to go and then you can pay for it and they will be here you know within a week or two so once all your items are checked that they one they can actually print them and two they can actually create the pcbs you come to this screen so as you can see order is completed so it lets you know if there's ticks next to it that you know they're, they're good to go so it's just a matter of paying your bill as you can see i've ordered a few other items here for videos that i got coming up so watch out for those um another pcb here and some 3d printed pla items now the one we're going through on this video here is this one here as you can see so i'll just point you to the top here so i ordered these i'm just going to give you some sort of idea on how quickly these items get to you so on the second of on the second of july 2024 i ordered them so they as you can see, they can take particular PLA items six to eight days to create, three to four on a PCB. And we can go over to this is DHL. So I've got no affiliation with DHL. So obviously just putting in my tracking numbers. So they, they got the parcel on the 10th of July of 2024. And I received it by the 14th. So delivery, delivery from China to Australia in four days. And all up from pushing the enter button to items received is 12 days so all loco net modules except for those that have their own power supply draw their power from the loco net bus when you have a large layout like i do with multiple feedback decoders throttles and other loco net devices you'll run into an issue as the loco net has a limitation off the bus of 500 milliamps the solution for this is you need to have a 12 volt dc power supply as a part of your loco net hub or split a lot we do on this occasion so what we're going to look at doing here is we got the the loco net split in our in line so at the very top here this black cable coming in put coming into the splitter from your loco net um, enable dcc so you can see the black cable here that's the coming from the loco net bus communication bus from your dcc command station in my case the digitized dr5000 and then you got your four outputs so i'll just quickly show you on this first one you can see how all the all the outputs are working there and i'll just quickly go across to output number two And number three, I won't go through all of them for all four unit, you get the gist. And then output four. 
as you can see we've been able to successfully use the four outputs of the splitter obviously that gives you the flexibility of, as we have discussed uh, previously on this video exactly that's the the lovely bit about the loco net it just the, the flexibility how you can connect all your loco net devices up because obviously you are giving individual addresses um, not like other sort of protocols sort of the s88n which is a, a sort of more of a, a european protocol where everything is daisy chained together so you got addresses one to 16 17 32 and so on and you can't actually have any chains off that without changing the addressing of of your outputs so that's obviously a really nice feature of the loco net so that's the end of the video so this was a really fun project because I needed some of these on my layout. I have bought other ones from Digikai's before, but now obviously they're no longer with us. Makes it a little bit, uh, a little bit harder to do this. Moving forward, I'll definitely use these because um, these are a lot cheaper in my mind for me to make these up and not a lot of time really. So like always, I have three questions. So number one, if you're a local net user for starters, would you, do you use splitters like this? If not, what? what other options are out there or what devices do you use? Make sure you put in the comments section below and I'd be really interested to see what other models are doing. Number two, if so, what sort of tweaks could I do to this circuit build or you've done to you know other circuit boards you might have made up to, to achieve the same outcome? And number three, like always, if there's any glaring errors, put in the comment section below or how could I make this PC B board um, any better? If you like this video and if you like this channel, please consider becoming a patron. I will put the link in the description below. So every little bit counts regarding a one-off donation to the channel or a monthly subscription if that's what you like to do, just to help me purchase some of the items that I do in these videos. Um, on the whole, it's all funded by myself and also all the gear I've bought on myself as well. So um, if yeah, I would be very appreciative if you could look at doing that for me. Also, don't forget to subscribe, like, hit that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming content. Make sure you give it a big thumbs up if it's the sort of video you like, because the YouTube algorithm loves the love, so to speak, and that type of thing will let me know if this is the type of video that you like, and I can continue to make um, such videos as these, and YouTube will put similar types of videos in front of you to watch also. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Blessings to you all. Peace out.